I'm Lois Gray from North Highland College UHI um, and today in this video I'm going to show you how to use the EDA Playground to compile and simulate your VHDL files. So we're doing this for coursework one of the Electronics 3 module um, and the EDA uh, Playground is not the recommended app because it's a little difficult to use. So if at all possible please use the Model Sim PE Student Edition um, software instead. But the disadvantage to the Model Sim software is that you do have to install it on your computer. It takes about 400 megabytes of hard disk space and you do have to license it. So I'm giving you this other option um, if you're struggling to do that. But it, like I say, it's more tricky to use. So if at all possible, use the Model Sim PE. The other disadvantage of this software is it's not so much an industry standard, whereas the Model Sim PE is. So anyway, the first thing we want to do is find the EDA Playground. Um, there will be a link to this on Brightspace, but if you can't find the link, you can just type in EDA Playground. Um, it's usually the first one that comes up, so just click on that. So I'll explain the windows that come up here. So we have the design window in which you will um, write the code for your component. And then we have a test bench window in which you will write the code for your test bench to test your unit. Um, on the left here, we've got options of setting up different um, compilers and simulators. Um, there's also some examples, so I'll show you one of those. Um, and down the bottom here, you want to possibly fill in your preferred title. Um, decide whether you want the link to be public or private. Um, and put in a short description. And the files are saved in somewhere called your playground, which you can access from this menu up here, this drop down menu here. Okay, so without further ado, I'll show you an example. Um, so if we click on the VHDL example here, and we can just select the first one, the basic OR gate. So I might as well just talk you through the code while we're We've got the code here. I am going to show you the half adder example that's in the notes as well. But looking at this example, which has been given to us by the EDA Playground people, we can just quickly go through this. So we have our library, which contains the sort of things like header files, which specify things like logic levels, um, input and output types, um, things you don't want to write in every single piece of code that you write. So we're just using the IEEE library, which is the most common one, and we're only using the logic um, header file. And then we have here our entity specifications. So you'll remember the entity specifies the component physical parameters, what its inputs are, what its outputs are, and how they behave. Um, so here we have two inputs, A and B, which are both inputs and they're standard logic. And we have Q, which is an output, which is also standard logic. And then we have to end our entity there. Um, as I was saying to you in the other video I did for the model sim, be careful with your brackets. Um, this last bracket and semicolon are rather the wrong way around, possibly not what you'd expect. Whereas every other line finishes with a semicolon. Um, this first bracket opens the port configuration. This last bracket closes the port configuration and the semicolon is there just to define that's the end of that little bit of code. And then you'll remember from the notes that the VHDL um, coding requires an, an entity specification and then an architecture which defines how the component behaves. Um, in this case it's a simple register transfer logic, combinational logic or gate. So that's the lowest level of component we can have. Um, and they've written this a little more complicated than perhaps you need. What they've done is opened a process, defined the two inputs to that process, which are A and B, uh, and then defined how the output reacts to A and B. And again, it's not just a simple equal sign here. It's a less than sign and then an equal sign to define that Q equals A or B. It's an OR gate, that's what you'd expect. And then you have to end the process and finally you have to end the um, entire component, the RTL component. So that's fine, that's our um, component design. 
And then on this side we have our test bench. So again, libraries at the top, um, an empty entity because a test bench isn't a physical component, but VHDL code still requires an entity to be written. And then the architecture of the test bench is, first of all, defining which component you're going to test. So we're going to test the OR gate. That's this line here. Um, we just define the ports as they were here. So that's exactly the same. Um, and then we have to map each port to a signal because you can't test ports. You have to test signals. You can't simulate ports. You can only simulate signals. So we've got signals A and B and Q out. Um, they're all standard logic signals. And in this line here, we're stating which instance of the entity we're going to use or which instance of the component are we going to use. So we're going to use a single instance called DUT, which stands for device under test. Um, and then we're going to map our signals to the ports on that entity or on that instance. Okay, um, and then the next few lines explain how we're going to exercise these signals to see what our component does. So uh, we're going to, we're doing these within a process. We have to begin the process and then we set the logic levels for the two inputs. Wait for a nanosecond just for a setup time. Um, and in this case, we're actually going to assert a note. So essentially, that's a little report that will come out. So if we fail the expected condition, which is um, a zero for inputs of zero, zero, we'll get an error there. Um, the same is true for all the other setups we've got there. So we're exercising it with zero, zero, then zero, one, then one, and don't care, X, I don't care. Um, and then one, one, um, and then, yeah. And then at the very end, if the test works completely correctly, we will have a report saying test done. So if it doesn't fail any of these tests, it'll come up with test done. So that's one of the reasons why I said the EDA playground's a little harder to use because the waveform editor doesn't, the waveform viewer doesn't automatically appear. Um, what does appear are these little report statements. Um, and they will appear in this bottom line here, bottom part here, which is showing you what's happening. Okay, so let's just look at simulating this. So it's already been set up with a compiler that's suitable and with a simulator that's suitable. We will actually use the same simulator, the Aldec Riviera Pro. To use that particular simula simulator, EDA Playground will ask you to register your account. So you just fill in the details. Um, it's just the same as registering for anything else. Fill in your details um, and they will send you an email to validate those details. And then you'll be able to use these industry standard um, simulators rather than the free ones. Um, they are better than the free ones. They do work better. So uh, we'll stick with the Aldec Riviera Pro. Um, the only other thing we might want to do is we might want to put in a runtime. I'm not going to do that for this program because this example already works. But what we will want to do is see our waveforms after we've run that. So you need to tick open EP wave after run. Okay, then um, usually there would be an option of saving that. There doesn't seem to be an option here, but never mind. I'll show, show you the option of saving with the uh, half, half adder that we write ourselves. So if we click run on here, nice and simple, run. Uh, what it's doing will come up in the bottom here. And because we ticked open EP wave, we'll get EP wave coming up, uh, showing us how our VHDL code is behaving. Um, we can put cursors on there and we can move them along, I think. Yeah, so you can click and you can see it's not liking me doing that. Yeah, sometimes it, I think it depends where your mouse is. Um, and it will tell you what the value of all the inputs and the outputs are at this point. So it's also got the ports here. It's got the signals and it's got the ports. Um, and of course, you could take a screenshot of that for your reports. OK, to close that, you just need to click here or you could just iconize it with the minimize sign there. Um, oh, sorry. And to close it, click there. But to get it out of the way, just click on the black bar and it disappears. 
Okay, next thing I'm going to show you is the half adder because it's a little more difficult to set up. So um, I'm just going to get this from my playground files because I compiled it earlier. Um, so it will be under your playgrounds. I haven't published it. It's got a bit of a weird name. This is what automatically came up. So if I click that, hopefully you'll recognize that this is the um, data from the notes. Um, you can just type this in yourself or you can copy and paste it if you want to do it quickly. Probably better to type it in yourself because you will learn a little bit more about VHDL coding doing that. And there is a VHDL question normally in the exam, so you do have to sort of understand what you're doing. So I'll not go through the code again. Um, I've done that already in previous videos and it's quite straightforward. Or will run through it very quickly. Libraries, entity de definition, um, architecture, what it does. It's a half adder. So the carry output's A and B and the sum output is A, X or B. Um, you can use A, X or B instead of this rather long explanation here. Um, and then the test bench is very similar to the one we just saw. Define the component, um, define signals, map the signals to the component ports, um, to the instance of the component ports, which in this case I've called UUT, stands for unit under test. And then write our stimulus code. Um, so again, we're going to exercise the inputs, make them different logic values, and wait and see what happens. Okay, so this time we're going to run this, but I did notice that you have to set a sensible number in the runtime. Um, if you set too large a number, um, it runs out of space and you can't see the waveform. And if you set too small a number, it'll just come up and say it could only run one instance. And all it'll do is just run the very first 10, 10 nanoseconds and stop and not do anything else. So I'm hoping this will work. I'll just point out the things that you might need to change. So you might need to change your coding type to VHDL. This simulator can run Verilog as well. And I think it defaults to Verilog when it first comes in. So make sure you select VHDL from the list there. Um, you will need to type in the top entity so the top entity we want to test is the test bench. Um, so you need to type test bench in there. And another thing that's important with this particular um, simulator is that the architecture needs to be called test bench. Okay, so not any name that you like. It's got to be test bench, um, as it does the entity name as well. See the entity there. And they have to match what you put in here. Um, going to stick with the Ardec Riviera Pro. You'll see there are lots of examples that you could choose, but we're not going to do that. We're going to go with Ardec Riviera Pro. And you will need to type in the value in here, and it has to be 100 nanoseconds, actually. 100 N doesn't work. So 100 nanoseconds. Tick the Open EP Wave after run, and then save. So you'll see here there's an asterisk that says that that's not been saved. So what you want to do is click that, and that asterisk should disappear. Good. Okay, that, I think that's ready. So now if we click run, it should run. As I say, if you do get errors, they will come up in that bottom command window. I'll just shut that for a second. They will come up down here, but they won't be very obvious. I think you'll find it very difficult to debug um, in this. So if you can f possibly compile your code in the model sim PE, even if you can't get the simulator to run, and then just use this for simulation, you might have more success. Anyway, so looking at our EP wave, hopefully you can see that this has simulated all the possible options for A, B, and carry and sum. For this particular model, I had the signal names the same as the entity port names, so that it essentially looks like it's just done both things twice, which is what you'd expect because we've connected the signals to the port, so it's the same signals on both anyway. And you can do a quick check as to whether you think that is actually working as a half adder or not, looking at the waveforms. So starting at 0, 0, we get carry and sum being 0. Um, then if we put in one zero, we get the carry is zero and the sum is one. Um, if we put uh, one one, uh, where have we got one one? A and B are both one. 
A and B both one. Yeah, then we will get a carry being one and the sum being zero. So that looks like that's working fine. Okay, so that's all I wanted to show you just now. Hopefully you will be able to do this. I'm not really an expert on this at all. So if you do run into problems, I'll try my best to help. But I, I am far better with the uh, mental graphics software than I am with this EDA playground. Okay, bye for now then.